For decades, the term forever war has been primarily associated with the United States. However, this may no longer be the case. It is increasingly evident that the president of the Russian Federation, Vladimir Putin, is pursuing a forever war with Ukraine. In this video, we'll explore the reasons behind this. Before we continue, please consider liking this video and subscribing to my channel. Russian President Vladimir Putin has made it absolutely clear that there cannot be any talks with Kyiv after its attack on Russia's borderline Korsk region, Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov said. The Russian Foreign Minister refuted allegations about contacts, ahead of potential Qatar and Turkey-mediated talks with Kyiv, slamming them as mere rumors. Russia is the largest nations in the world. Russia almost has all the raw materials to build anything they want. Russia has iron, coal, bauxite, manganese, nickel, and oil, the principal raw materials needed for modern industry. It also has a wide variety of foodstuffs and raises many of the crops necessary for the manufacture of textiles, such as flax, wool, and cotton. And as a result of the Ukraine war, Russia factories are more active and thriving than ever before. The Russians are causing us huge problems. We thought we could easily handle the Russians. As I said at the beginning of the show, we thought we could bring them to their knees with economic sanctions. We thought the Ukrainian military, which we had uh, trained and armed uh, between 2014 and 2022, uh, would, you know, uh, defeat the Russians uh, in all sorts of ways on the battlefield in Ukraine, and none of that panned out. Russia today, after the war is classified as a high-income country by the World Bank. Real GDP per capita growth accounted for 3.6, while GNI per capita grew by 11.2% in 2023, clearly demonstrating successful macroeconomic policy conducted, despite external pressure. Among key factors that contributed to economic growth in 2023 are trade, plus 6.8%, the financial sector, plus 8.7%, and construction, plus 6.6%. And on the top of that, both China and India are buying heavily discounted crude oil from Russia, like there's no tomorrow. Recently, India overtook China as the world's biggest importer of Russian oil in July. The U.S. officials add that China is helping Russia to improve its satellite and space-based capabilities and providing satellite imagery to help Russia conduct war in Ukraine. Chinese entities are also likely providing Russia with nitrocellulose, a substance used to make propellants for weapons. The Ukraine war is not only profiting Russia, but also both China and India. The Chinese will also want to prolong the war. It certainly does. I mean, the, the war in Ukraine and the Gaza conflict are mana from heaven for the Chinese. Uh, there's no question about that. I think the Chinese will become more influential in the Middle East with the passage of time, and they will become uh, more uh, involved in helping the Russians. Uh, for example, I think you'll see the Chinese up in the Arctic with Russia. It's quite clear that the Russians uh, are interested in getting the Chinese to help them in the Arctic because they understand they're outnumbered seven to one. As I said before, of the eight countries in the Arctic, seven are NATO countries. And the Russians are now looking to involve the Chinese with them uh, in the Arctic. So with the passage of time, Chinese influence uh, outside of East Asia will just grow. Several recent actions by the Kremlin reinforce its signals that Russian President Vladimir Putin is committed to sustaining his grinding war of attrition against Ukraine for years to come, if necessary. Yeah, I think the strategy that Jen Stoltenberg bought, the Secretary General of NATO, and that by that buy-in NATO bought, that Washington pushed on them was, look guys, and gals we're gonna we're gonna use ukraine to bleed russia it'll take about six months to a year we're gonna bleed russia down and then we're all gonna go after china nato and washington we're gonna go after china that was the strategy i think that's been severely hampered now because they are not bleeding russia they keep saying they are but they're not russia's economy is going bang 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 and this appointment of an economist to be the new defense minister for Russia was a, a very smart move because now what Putin is doing 
is he's using the industrial base that he's revived and made fairly powerful to go even further, maybe from 6% of GDP to 8 or 9% of GDP applied so he can fight NATO. So their idea that they were going to weaken Russia and then go get China is totally, totally gone now. Uh, if it's not, they're stupider than I think. Um, so what are they going to do now? Um, they're going to have to sort of slide off Ukraine after the elections and concentrate on China. What's keeping them from sliding off Ukraine right now and doing China is Gaza, which has weakened us in particular, majorly, because we've used so much of our armaments to rearm Israel each time it goes through a bunch of munitions. Um, so I don't know where the strategy is now. I know that uh, they're, they're staying with Ukraine so Joe can get reelected. And I suspect after the election, we'll see a different approach to Ukraine. But then the ultimate aim is to go after China. Um, and I don't know what that means uh, except loss. And that loss will present us with one choice. When China sinks three or four aircraft carriers, when China beats us in the South China Sea, when China takes Taiwan by force, I don't think they're going to do that. But if we force them to, they might, then we'll go nuclear. And then the world loses. The world loses badly. Nobody wants a nuclear war or the devastating aftermath of a nuclear winter. For this reason, it's not only in Putin's interest to prolong the conflict. Extending the war in Ukraine serves the interests of many around the world. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please stay safe, take care, and see you soon in the next video. Bye-bye.